Welcome back to College Conversations. I'm Dr. Fedor and I help you navigate college. Please remember to hit subscribe and share this video with others who also might find it useful. Today, I have with me Jordan Levy from CapSource, an industry integrated experiential learning company. So thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to, to be with you today, Jess. Great to have you here. So I want you to explain to me what is CapSource and how does it help the students? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, back when I was a student, uh, I went to Lehigh for my undergraduate degree. It's a school um, a little bit outside New York City. And of course, the nice thing, you know, we were, we were outside of the city. So we had a really great campus culture, but ultimately it was a little hard for us to get experience working with real industry. Um, and so really the only opportunity I had to do that was going into my senior year. Um, I was able to intern in my field of choice, which was accounting. And only then was I able to realize that I wasn't interested in audit or joining the big four accounting firm. And so, you know, it kind of set me off on, um, you know, fortunately a, a good um, path, which, you know, ended up being very entrepreneurial, but, you know, really was focused on trying to figure out how to make sure that other students weren't having that same experience of going through a degree program without really understanding what um, the career outcome could be like or would be like. Right. Um, so ultimately, that's what kind of inspired us to think about trying to figure out how to get companies, industry more involved in the education process by helping schools build programs that you know revolve around industry collaboration a bit more easily, more scalably, more effectively. So how do you find your companies to partner with or the industries to partner with? So it's all based on the types of courses and programs that we're working with. We often work with master's level business programs, undergrad business programs across all domains. So it could be supply chain management, it could be marketing, it could be finance and accounting, et cetera. We also work in more technical subject areas. So we've done computer science projects, data analytics projects, and um, products across various engineering disciplines like physics and um, material science and electrical engineering, and then um, some social work as well recently. So really trying to figure out how to help students who are interested in, in uh, you know, being community leaders, community advocates, um, advocates for those who need it. There's plenty of organizations out there. So how we attract them is really about how to make it easy for them to get started. So I think the one problem that we're trying to solve for is that, you know, everyone says like, oh, well, well students need to get more internships. That's how they're going to get the experience. Well, there's only 2 million internships every year offered for right. 22 million college and graduate students. So that just means that we can't keep spreading the same 2 million internships using different job boards. We need to convince companies to create those programs, to get involved in programs. And that's why we help schools really interject themselves into the role of creating and managing those programs. So that's kind of how our process works. We are really creating a system to onboard companies for things like mentorship programs, case competitions, and live case experiences that are embedded into classes much easier um, than it would otherwise be, especially considering every school really has their own process for doing it. So I think we're trying to streamline it, um, give them optionality, make sure it's clear what the objectives are, templates um, to make the scoping of projects much more easy. Um, so those are some things that we do to really help onboard organizations. So I know um, the past couple of years going through COVID and a pandemic and a, a lockdown and, and then coming out of that, your business, like every other business, has had its challenges. What are some of the things that have come out of the past couple of years that maybe have surprised you or maybe made CapSource even stronger? So I think, you know, we, we try to stay true to our mission and purpose, which is to build resiliency for students, right? So ultimately, if you're graduating with no idea what you want to do or even what skills you have, I think that's sometimes often the scariest part because you really do have skills. You have skills from, you know, working on class projects and doing primary research on different, you know, aspects of the curriculum. Um, but I think one thing that's really tough is like actually being able to explain to an employer how those types of experiences are ultimately um, useful for them as a way to consider you for a role. And so we call it reference where the experience we are trying to build curriculum 
that helps students gain reference worthy experience, something to talk about on interviews, something to talk about on their LinkedIn and showcase as evidence of their skills and success in the workplace. And so really that is what builds resiliency. That's the type of thing that gets you through, you know, the economy and, and the job market, which, you know, as we all know, is right around the corner, considering some of the signaling and some of the, 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 the really big headlines that we've been seeing, seeing about a recession. You know, this happens pretty much every 10 to 15 years. How do we help students understand, you know, the best ways to stand out, the best ways to ensure that they're resilient in, in their packaging, in the way that they approach the job market. And so that's what I think um, I've learned the most about, especially by working with all these companies, trying to, you know, we've worked with thousands of organizations at this point. So watching how their leaders have pivoted and responded to COVID and other, you know, economic, um, ec economically impactful um, changes that have happened as, you know, since then. So I think that's kind of the same skill set. If you can be resilient as an organization, obviously a, that's a byproduct of having resilient leaders and resilient talent. And so we are trying to focus on helping students understand the world around them and build resiliency so that they can stand out as an applicant in the workplace. That's so important because I find that the students, they often have more skills than they realize. And it's just how to package them and present them on um, their resumes or, or job interviews and, and so forth. And CapSource certainly does uh, do that. If someone is working at a company or owns a company and they're interested in partnering with you, what's the best way for them to reach out to you, Jordan? Yeah, so, you know, we're very active on LinkedIn. Um, so you can always find me there. Otherwise, you know, my, my email and scheduler is you know, available right through the website. Um, you could book time directly with us to get a demo. Um, there are lots of ways to get started, including freeways. So all of our class projects, we call them live cases, as well as our open cases, which are non-synchronous projects that you can work on with students. So just post the challenge, um, let faculty use it as part of their curriculum, their class discussions and homework and group projects. Um, so those are free, um, as well as the mentorship curriculum. So we're really trying to encourage organizations to just register and get involved with next gen talents. Um, the most important thing to think about if you're an employer is 85 to 90% of the fortune 500 companies turn over every 50 years. Um, and so those are the powerhouse companies of today, right? So how do we ensure that your company doesn't fall to the same fate? Well, the reality is you got to stay in touch with the next generation. If you're only thinking about your current customer base and your current team, within 10 years, you're gonna be in trouble, right? Like you're not able to recruit the, the talent, you're not able you know, to be a part of the, the general dialogue with when it comes to the industry standards, and you're not really keeping in touch with the trends and changing times. Even some of the nuances about like how social media and other types of digital tools are being yeah. used to create efficiency and more effective collaboration, that's what you learn from the next generation. And so we find that as long as it's a, easy kind of turnkey way of getting that next gen involved, which our platform truly prides itself on, um, then it really shouldn't be too hard, right? We're not asking you to create some highbrow, really expensive internship program because that's cost prohibitive, resource intensive to manage them, right? So we use a much simpler approach. It's very case-based. We design the curriculum in advance. There's templates. And so really you're posing it for students to work on. They're gaining experience. They're sharing their ideas with you. And you get to really use this as a way um, to select qualifying higher top talent. Jordan, you're doing extremely important work helping the students and the companies uh, train, like you said, the, the next generation of workers. Jordan from CapSource talking about industry integrated experiential learning. Thanks so much, Jordan, for joining me today. Please remember to hit subscribe and share this video with others who might also find this useful and remember to keep learning.